Greetings once more, dear friends. Fanatical Dragon back with another new movie review, and today take a look at Radiance's release of 18 Years in Prison. Actually due out today, on the 29th of July, I got my copy a little bit early, because I pre-ordered through the Radiance's website, and another chance to check out a Taikato movie I had never seen, and another in the long list of reasons as to why Taikato is fast becoming my, one of my favourite Japanese directors really of all time, from the movies that I've seen so far. We're three movies in so far from Radiance, and um, from his filmography. 18 Years in Prison is the third, we also had uh, By a Man's Face Shall You Know Him and I the Executioner. I've previously done a review of uh, By a Man's Face Shall You Know Him and I'll leave a link down to that below. But this is another chance for the star of this movie, uh, the wonderful Naboro Ando, to be reunited with the director. And in some ways a movie that I enjoyed even more than By a Man's Face. Um, pretty simple setup, though beautifully well staged, executed, directed and performed. So this time round uh, Naboro Ando is playing a character called Kawada. And after the, the Second World War, he's basically trying to kind of um, get a kind of community based kind of illegal black market system up and running to try and help the people who've been devastated by the war. Um, so very much a Robin Hood sort of scenario. He's kind of robbing from kind of businesses where he can do and then allowing the, the resources from that to kind of filter back down to the people. Um, it's caught quite early on in the movie um, trying to kind of take um, a stock of copper wire which they're going to sell to help a young girl's sister um, who's struggling with her health and has quite, uh, needs to get an operation the operation is going to cost quite a lot of money so he and uh, one of his war buddies played by Asio Kawaiki as playing Tsukada decide to kind of go off and try and steal this lot of copper wire which is going to be a very large haul for them the cops kind of basically discover them in the act and he sort of self-sacrifices himself to try and distract the cops so that his friend can get away with the promise that his friend is going to do right by the people and set up a market for them um set up basically an area or community where the people can kind of start kind of rebuilding their lives helped by the resources from their big score um so he's sent to prison um for 18 years as the name of the movie would suggest um, and when he's inside, um, he's is visited by his his war buddy friend Sugada, who he assumes, somewhat incorrectly as it turns out, is basically doing what he promised to do. It turns out he's not. He's basically setting up a bit of a crime empire. So over the course of the movie, um, Kawada finds out what's going on and has to kind of try and really work out what he's going to do about it. An incredible supporting cast here. You also get the wonderful uh, Thomas Aburo Wakayama, um, the shogun assassin himself here as a slightly sadistic prison warden. Though there are times when morally he seems like he is actually maybe not that bad a dude, but I'm going to let you discover how that all unfolds for yourself if you check out the movie. Um, and then we also have uh, our love interest in the film, played by Hiroko uh, Sakura Machi, she's playing Azako, and her brother. Now, one of her brothers ends up in prison as well. Um, a young actor um, by the name of Masumi Kondo, he's playing Suichi, who um, Naboro Ando's character tries to kind of take under his wing, um, despite that kid's doing everything possible to try and kind of basically um, cause as much trouble as he can inside. Um, so yeah, much of the film takes place inside, but then we do also see what's going on outside the walls, which made it quite unusual for a prison movie. Often you're just following the prisoners in, who are incarcerated, but here we get a sense of the world and how it's changing outside. But beautifully, beautifully well shot, incredibly well acted once again by Naboro Ando. Um, I'm noticing quite a, a lot of visual trends in Taikato's movies. There's certain things that he very much seems to favour, often shoots very much from low angles, so you often kind of see ceilings in shot, gives everyone this sort of larger in life, almost kind of heroic presence in the frame. Um, though, unlike some of his other movies, a huge emphasis on chiaroscuro lighting here, and um, borrowing heavily from kind of um, 1940s, 1950s film noir movies, so that this is a colour movie. Um, but the kind of prison setting gives him an awful lot of opportunities to play around with light in really interesting ways. We have an entirely black frame with just a shaft of light coming through the the door of the the kind of the prison where they open it up to put in the food, these sort of things. And uh, the prisoner is all given these really distinctive orange jumpsuits, um, which works really well. You kind of get this sort of beautiful splash of colour in places. But yeah, just an incredible, really well performed, really well realised movie. And Naboro Ando seems to be at his best when he's working with Taiketo. I mean, often, although he has come from a past of being a former Yakuza kind of gang member himself, um, often he was kind of cast very much to type where he was playing kind of gang members and and kind of yakuza members in fact another release from radiance sympathy for the underdog you can see him playing just that in that movie incidentally also one of the other actors uh, the, the guy who's playing uh, naboro ando's friend in 18 years in prison asio keoki also shows up in sympathy for the underdog as does thomas abaro wakayama a um, bit of an all-star movie that one um, but in in this one here 
really we're getting a chance to see Naboro Endo playing something a little bit more interesting. Um, in both this and By Man's Facial you know him, he's kind of playing characters with kind of quite a solid moral core. Um, so he's usually kind of drawn into the situations that he is drawn into somewhat reluctantly, um, ultimately to try and do the right thing. Um, so kind of morally he's kind of quite straight and true in both of these films, um, which makes him really compelling to watch because as Tony Rain says in his excellent special feature on here, he's maybe not the most charismatic, but he's very, very engaging to watch and you kind of end up rooting for him even if you don't necessarily particularly like the characters that he plays you usually kind of agree with their point of view and which direction he's taken the story in but yeah just an absolutely incredible movie all around like I say beautifully beautifully shot really really enjoying seeing how Taiketo kind of exhibits his sort of sense of style in the various movies that we've seen uh, we are getting another one uh, coming um, in later on in August on the 26th of August we're getting Tokajiro Lone, Lone Yakuza which is another movie that I've not seen but I'm jumping into with a fair degree of confidence now based on the other movies of his that I have checked out. Um, I would also encourage you, if you are enjoying these Radiant releases, do pick up Tomez's book um, on Taiketo uh, by a man's style, sure you know him. It's quite short, but really, really entertaining, really informative. And Tomez's presence, again, is all over 18 years in prison. Um, he does an essay inside the booklet. Um, which is really, really good. And um, we kind of speaks about Taiketo's career and really kind of how it compared to Kurosawa because he was at, for a time one of the, uh, the assistant directors for Kurosawa on Rashomon. Um, and also then how that would kind of impact on the career of most notably Kinji Fukusaku. Uh, the screenwriter of 18 Years in Prison actually also wrote uh, the Battles Without Honor series for Kinji Fukusaku and uh, Yakuza Graveyard, which is another one that you can also pick up from Radiance Films. So kind of quite an interesting legacy that kind of came out of the partnership on this movie on 18 Years in Prison. So Tom Mez gives us a great article in the book and there's also a, an interview with Naboro Ando himself, which is really entertaining. He's quite self-deprecating and really interesting and engaging to, um, to kind of hear what he had to say, particularly about his work with Taiketo, which he clearly held in pretty high regard. It's also two great on-disc extras. Uh, we get an interview with Tony Rains. Speaking about Taiketo's work in general and a little bit about Noboro Ando, but mostly focusing in on Taiketo. And then Tom Mez has done a visual essay kind of speaking about Japanese prison movies and 18 years in prison place amongst those. Interesting that we've had a little bit of a spate of these recently. Um, Eureka put out quite recently the, the Abashiri Prison 1 to 3. Um, that's, that's slightly earlier. They had the first Abashiri Prison movie was from 1965. 18 Years in Prison was from 1967, um, but interesting seeing how different they are, really. The first Abishiri Prison, um, largely just a kind of Japanese remake of the Defiant Ones. Um, and then it sort of spawned off an incredibly successful, what, 17 film series, I think, and kind of became its own animal, really, as it went further on. Um, but for me, 18 Years in Prison, a much more enjoyable, kind of much more interesting movie, if we're just kind of comparing this to those. Um, but also, um, Tom Mez mentions in his visual essay that the female prisoner Scorpion movies, which uh, Radiance head honcho uh, Francisco Simeone also worked on when he was with Arrow. And another great, great, great series of films and a really, really strong box set from Arrow if you get a chance to pick it up if you haven't already. So I feel I've rambled on far too much for just now. That, I think, is about all I have to say. I've been the Fanatical Dragon. Thank you so, so much for watching this. If you've enjoyed it, then do please remember to click the red button and subscribe to the channel and I'll be doing more reviews and more unboxings, all that sort of stuff in due course. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.